Coming up on show 584, the Model 3 earns a top safety rating. You've heard of fake news, but what about fake noise? You get it on the Porsche Taycan, and the Zero SRF is an EV sport bike. Those stories and many more coming up on the show today. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily for Wednesday, 18th of September. This is what happened in the last 24 hours. It's Martin Lee here going through every EV story, so you don't have to. Brilliant article on the Fully Charged.show website from Ewan McTurk about the used car prices with EVs and how depreciation just isn't happening as fast as some people thought it would happen. Cars are holding their value really well, but you want to get the best deal, right? If you're in the US, check out myv.com, a marketplace all about buying and selling cars with plug sockets on them. So the Tesla end of quarter rush is on and checking out my Twitter account, someone who tracks the movement of ships and deliveries of cars, Morton Grove, he is at Morton Lund 89. He says that as expected, the Glovis Courage, a name of a ship, by the way, Glovis Courage has popped up within AIS range again, uh, heading into Zeebrugge on the 19th of September. It's the seventh ship and the closest that two ships have been entering Zeebrugge loaded with Teslas. End of quarter is going to be wide. So here in Europe, we are getting a ton of right-hand drive, left-hand drive models as well. And of course, if they are delivered, they have to be with the customer, signed, sealed, delivered, I'm yours, and all that kind of stuff. It does count towards the end of quarter numbers, which Tesla is so keen in order to report. Well, from Tesla's own blog, they have a new safety award to celebrate in new tests from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, the IIHS. The Model 3 has been named a 2019 Top Safety Pick Plus vehicle. It's the highest achievement awarded by the Institute. Now, to evaluate whether the Model 3 met the criteria for this top rating, Tesla say that the IIHS tested the car's crashworthiness, the occupant protection, crash avoidance and headline systems, Model 3 and top marks in all eight sets, including a superior rating in front crash prevention, which evaluates a car's automatic emergency braking system. Moving on, uh, they also say that the highest possible rating in the IIHS headlight assessment was achieved. In addition, Model 3's safety restraint system earned high marks, due in part to Model 3's seats. Now, the seats are designed and manufactured. They're done in-house. They're done at a dedicated seat factory in Fremont, if you were wondering, by the way. As well as the thick curtain airbag, that side curtain airbag that inflates to protect the occupants, uniquely shaped front pattern passenger airbag as well, which help protect a passenger's head from a uh, car's A pillar and the centre screen. In terms of crash mitigation, good headlights can prevent nighttime crashes, which is why the Model 3 comes standard with automatic high and low beam headlights that earned top marks in the testing. And when it comes to crash prevention, also, the Model 3 earned a superior rating thanks to the automatic emergency braking system, which successfully avoided collisions at both 12 miles per hour and 25 miles per hour. I'll pop a link to Tesla's blog if you want to read more. According to The Verge, they say the Model 3 was only really dinged in two places. Uh, IAHS said that the pre-June 2018 car, so you're going back well over a year now, had acceptable headlights, but not the best. And on all models, the group said there's a moderate risk of injury to a lower left leg of the driver in a head-on collision that overlaps with the driver's side of the vehicle. Very specific case, but nonetheless. And the car and driver article I found today says, and they put it in context, there are currently only 48 cars and trucks combined which achieve the top safety pick plus list. It's a category that was created in 2013. So the Model 3 really is indeed in fine company. A car that didn't do so well, though, is the 2019 Chevrolet Bolt. was recently tested by the IIHS and performed pretty well. However, two things lowered the overall result, according to Inside EVs. The first problem, they say, prevented the Bolt from earning the top safety rating was poor headlights, which caused too much glare. The second problem is the acceptable result of a small overlap front passenger side crash test. I'll pop a link to Inside EVs in the show notes if you would like to read more. Well, Daimler Trucks and Buses and the Chinese battery maker CATL, Contemporary Amperex Technology Limited, they've both entered into a global battery cell module supply agreement for electric series 
trucks. And when I say trucks, I think I mean the European version of a truck, as in what the US would call a semi-truck. You say truck and I think pickup, and I say truck and I think 18-wheeler. Well, CATL will supply lithium-ion battery cell models, uh, modules for a wide range of Daimler trucks and buses, and the global electric truck portfolio, which is to be introduced from 2021 onwards, including the Mercedes-Benz E-Actros, the Freightliner E-Cascadia, and the Freightliner EM2. The development of battery systems lies with Daimler trucks and buses. Uh, the battery pack assembly itself is going to be carried out by Daimler at its Mercedes-Benz Mannheim plant in Germany and its Detroit, Michigan plant in the US. Well, what if you're a car lover and you experience an EV like a Tesla or a Porsche Taycan for the first time? You fall in love with the instant torque, the acceleration, but you can't deal, for whatever reason, you can't deal with the lack of noise. Well... According to Stephen Loveday at Inside EVs, Porsche have the answer. And if you give them 500 of your hard-earned dollars, they will exchange that for a noise that the Taycan will make in the car's online configurator. They call it electric sport sound. It adds simulated motor sounds to the inside and the outside of the vehicle. This is different to the passenger... Sorry, the uh, outside noises that is a regulation that all new EVs must emit a sound below a certain speed to help those who are visually impaired. And no, this is actually a fake sound to make it sound like there's more happening with the motors than there really is. Let's face it, it's just an MP3 file, but they'll charge you $500 for that MP3 file and play it to you out of the car speakers when you floor the throttle. Uh, you can still choose to activate or deactivate the car's sound from the entertainment screens. Here is the sound that will cost you $500. <laughs> Moving on to what is quickly becoming known as the plaid powertrain. That might be an unofficial term for it, but anyway, it's going to hit the Model S first before the brand new Tesla Roadster. Is that good, bad, or indifferent? Let me know your thoughts. Some Elon tweets that we've been keeping up with. Elon, first of all, said, We expect these track times at the Nürburgring to be beaten by the actual production seven seat Model S plaid variant that goes into production around October, November next year. So there he's on Elon time. He's saying that in 2020, by November, there'll be a new powertrain for the Model S. I imagine there'll be a few people listening to this podcast that are thinking, hmm, just over a year away. That fits my upgrade schedule for my Model S. And with Elon time, maybe push that into early 2021. He also replied to somebody and said, no, the original five forward-facing seats plus the two rear-facing smaller seats, the new rear seats will accommodate larger passengers than before. And that's in reference to the new Model S because they are putting back into the configurator, uh, according for the Plaid powertrain anyway, in a year and a bit's time, the seven-seater option, which if you've been following things, was recently, or not so recently, deleted as they rationalised their options that you could configure across the line, really, with Tesla. Well, Pauline, who is just Pauline Lol, said, Will the other models be available on Plaid variants soon? New Roadster and X to come later. And Viv said, I guess the new Roadster will easily beat the all-time record on the Nürburgring. And Elon Musk replied to both of those, Absolutely. And so there we have uh, confirmation that the Plaid powertrain, if that is indeed what it's called, uh, or Plaid mode, is going to be making its way through the Model S before the model, the Roadster, is even released. And that does, if you knock over all the dominoes and follow that through, does mean that if you're talking about the Model S coming end of next year, early 2021, that was when the Roadster was due. So that would mean the Roadster is a uh, go pushed back not that anyone said explicitly they've been pushing back the timeline of the roadster but it must do if the s is coming first well tesla is also restating a claim made by elon a few months ago that the gigafactory in shanghai which is being built right now will have 3000 model 3s rolling off the assembly line by the end of the year according to the website ib times tesla's gigafactory 3 stands on 86 hectares that's 210 acres of land it's in somewhere called lingang in shanghai earlier this week it passed a mandatory government inspection required before they have to start production and the latest leaks seem to confirm that tesla's production time Timeline is on course. New leaks from users on the Weibo network show that Model 3 bodies in white inside Gigafactory Shanghai. Leaks on Chinese social media on Weibo from a user called Battery King. Nice username. 
reveal a largely complete section of the Gigafactory 3. The images show two partly built Model 3s on an assembly line surrounded by equipment. A big question, by the way, then, that is unanswered. Were these bodies in white made at Gigafactory Shanghai as a way of testing the equipment, or were they shipped in from Fremont as a way of testing the equipment. So here is the body in white up to us. We've got the shell and then what happens after that. So those answers haven't been forthcoming, but either way, these are half-built cars in a factory that a few short months ago was mud and a field. Moving on to that Nürburgring record, which everyone seems to be talking about. Does it really matter? Well, maybe, maybe not. Tesla tweeted an image of one of its test vehicles plugged into a newly installed supercharger at the Nürburgring. The tweet reads, We installed a supercharger at Nürburgring. Makes it feel like home, you know. Uh, well, Inside EVs and Motor1.com spoke to Tesla and the company confirmed the new supercharger was indeed connected to the grid. It has an electrical grid connection because some people had speculated online, Oh, that's nice. There's a supercharger with a cable coming out of the back of it, out of shot. But where does that cable go to? Some people saying a diesel generator. No, it is getting a, it has a grid hookup. The new charging also suggests the company plans to return to the Nürburgring themselves in the future, but also encouraging other Tesla drivers to go to the Nürburgring to have a play with their cars and then supercharge if they need to. According to Motor1.com, who only the day before had been reporting on how Tesla were charging the cars. Auto, Motor and Sport had reported the company shipped a diesel generator all the way from the US. The team there has been running it day and night and the noise has been allegedly annoying the locals. Uh, the Tesla crew will be there for three more weeks and by that time, uh, citizens will be happy for them to leave had the generator continued. But now they have the supercharger hooked in to the grid. Track neighbours will only have to put up with the sounds of engines revving from now on rather than the diesel generator. My thoughts on this, if you may, let me interject. Obviously, putting a supercharger station in is not cheap. Uh, money, no problem for Tesla. Location makes sense. There's not If you look at the supercharger map, there's not one for a long way around it. So it actually fills in a nice gap, although the Nürburgring is really, I mean this in the nicest way, in the middle of nowhere. If it wasn't a racetrack there, you certainly wouldn't have put a supercharger there. How quickly have they done this? Well, permits take time. That would suggest that if this is a permanent structure, they've been working on this for a long time. But to my eyes, and what do I know? It looks temporary. I know they said it's going to be there permanently, but the actual structure, you can see where the forklift truck lifts it up. It actually looks like a temporary structure at the moment. You can see the cable coming out the back of it that now they say goes off to the electrical grid, but it doesn't look installed like, you know, a supercharger looks installed. But Tesla say on their Twitter, it is indeed staying. Well, Mercedes-Benz has been utterly dominant in Formula One since the start of the turbo hybrid era, but it's now entering a championship where total supremacy is really hard to achieve, says the website autosport.com. Uh, reading this with my Autosport Plus membership, uh, the might of a manufacturer means many resources, something that the Mercedes Formula One team has made major use of to achieve dominance in Formula One. The Formula E arm, uh, which is not an electric copy of the Formula One team, is deploying a similar approach. The Formula E's spec only first season then it slowly developed technology during its second third and fourth campaigns has many really made a series that is close exciting racing well that continued for the first generation of the gen 2 era last year and this year and included the most unbelievable run of eight different drivers winning the first eight races but Three new rules really played a part in mixing up the pecking order. Now Mercedes are entering Formula E from this year, from the end of this year. It straddles the calendar year. Uh, with all the might of Mercedes-Benz, will they become dominant like Formula One? Who knows? We're looking forward to a new season of Formula E. The article I was researching that from is all part of Autosport Plus. It's a fiver a month. They do a free trial. If you, like me, love motorsport, there really is no alternative to get signed up for that. Well, moving on to two wheels and the 2020 Zero SRF fires up. Sort of. You push a button because it's total silence. There's no exhaust rumble or clattering pistons. A few lights on the dash light up. Are you sure it's on? More than one person asked Jalopnik for this article. When you twist the throttle, you can hear something. More importantly, 
you feel it, Sage Jalopnik. The EV bike uh, outfit's most notable competitor at the moment is Harley-Davidson with the live wire. The Zero makes more power than Harley-Davidson's machine. Goes further as well with greater range, thousands of dollars cheaper. Part of Zero's credibility has been forged in competition at Pike's Peak and on dirt racing across the country. And if you want to read the full article, I'll put a link to Jalopnik in the show notes. They're very, very impressed with the Zero motorcycle. And the Montreal startup Tiger Motors, and that's not Tiger as in raw, that is T A I G A, <laughs> um, has spent the last few years tackling the tricky task of electrifying snowmobiles, but it's turning its attention to making cleaner and greener. Quiet personal watercraft. The company's unveiled a jet ski watercraft called the Orca at uh, the uh, uh, a show in Toronto on Tuesday night that can last for two hours on a full charge. And The Verge says today the Orca has a top speed of 65 miles an hour. <laughs> 65 miles an hour on a jet ski. Only for the brave. Only because it's electric power as well. 134 kilowatts of power. Wow, that's more than my car. And it's got a 23 kilowatt hour battery, which is bigger than my first EV. Uh, it can be standard, it can be charged on DC fast charging, uh, 0 to 80% in 20 minutes. It's got massive specs that would rival any nice car, but then again, it is $24,000 just for a jet ski. But if you are the kind of person who has all the toys, or maybe you have someone in your life who has everything they could possibly want, what do you get the person who has everything? Well, if you have a spare $24,000, get them an electric jet ski to blat about with at the weekend and they will thank you very much for it and finally we'll end with a really lovely story today that i have google translated from a dutch website called all over tesla.nl so this is the English translation with Google Translate. Uh, up to and including August this year, the top three selling, best-selling cars in uh, the Netherlands, uh, the Model 3, just over 10,000, the Volkswagen Polo, 9,500, the Ford Focus, 8,200, and you heard me right, not the most selling electric cars, the best-selling cars, full stop, was an electric car. Great news! Uh, Tesla's not only the best-selling car in a month, but over the whole year so far as well, has the influx of Model 3 made such an impact on this. Uh, so many cars have been purchased through lease, and whether the change in rules regarding the addition of uh, next year's uh, tax changes after January will have an effect of people trying to get their car done now rather than next year. Uh, a good chance the last three months of the year are going to be stellar for Tesla in the Netherlands. All right, let's get on to question of the week this week, set by myev.com. What's your dream EV road trip? What is your dream EV road trip? Let me know. Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com, or leave a comment on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you to 253 patrons of the podcast, and your generosity means I get to make this show every single day and hopefully entertain inform as well many many thousands of people every single day it's a real honor to do this show for you uh, thank you to our premium partners phil roberts of electric future brad crosby and avid technology as well thank you so much if you want to get any of the previous 583 shows the archive at the moment at least is online and it's free and I'll continue to pay for that to be online as a bit of a moment in time if you like. Last year and this year has been a crazy time for EVs and I'd like to document it. Uh, maybe leave a legacy behind when we look back in a few years of what we're talking about. So those podcasts will, will stay online. Uh, you can get them. And the new ones as well though come at you first and free and automatically if you become a free subscriber within your favourite podcast apps or maybe on YouTube. Hit subscribe. Come and say hi over the next 24 hours on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.